could take the head off. You've already done this, Dylan. You have to do it carefully, but I'm assuming you probably destroyed your head gasket. I can't remember if I saw that in the pictures or not, but here we go. Look at this. Ooh, I didn't even pry on it yet. See, that's a sign of a, of a nut. Well, first make sure all the bolts are actually unscrewed all the way. Leave them right in place, unless you want to make yourself a cardboard template. Because you need to put those bolts exactly where they go. I'm just going to grab it by this. I left everything kind of attached to it. My fingers underneath the edge, trying to cut myself because it's sharp. Straight up, straight up. There she is. Now you see that right there is the head gasket, which is minty. Perfect. That's kind of nasty. I don't know why that's like that. But I'll set this on the back of the truck. It's only full of water because I just loosened up and this is the water that was in the water jacket. And um, probably best thing I can do here is scoop it out. Of course the oil is going to be trash. Just kind of feeling around on things. Let's see if I can push the, uh, push the water out. Oh, watch your fingers. Never put your finger between the pulley and the belt. Been worse if had compression. I chopped my little finger off. So I'm just getting the water out of it, trying to. You know, allowing that water to flow right down into those valves. That's how you want it. Yeah. Watch your toes rolling back on me. Now the correct way of doing this probably would be to get a rag, but you know time for that and then you halt the entire job the entire experience here and you go into town and you buy the tools you need so I of course had the head off now I unbolt the uh, steering linkages so I can get the pan off of course drain all the oil underneath here you can see of course the crank now what you want to do, now I'm, I'm not going to do this because I am not taking out the crank. I am just going to take out one piston at a time, one connecting rod at a time. I'm going to do one at a time so I don't have to mark anything. But what I would suggest you do is get yourself a paint marker, which they sell at the auto parts store. Uh, wipe all the oil off everything so the paint marker stays on there nice and good. And then mark from the front of the engine back one two three four uh, on the caps for the uh, crank bearings or the not the crank bear well the crank bearings yes but uh, the uh, on the caps for the connecting rod bearings and but also the caps for the main bearings. so first you do the connecting rod bearings one two three four and then uh, I forget how many main bearings you have you might have like three one in the middle one on the end or two on the ends uh, you know one two three and so on from front to back but remember once you get those out of there you need to mark which bearing was on the bottom side of the uh, of the connecting rod which, which would be the uh, cap side of the connecting rod and which side of the bearing was on the connecting rod side so you see it's it's two halves two curved halves like that one is on the cap side one is on the connecting rod side and you got to keep in mind also for the main bearings one of the caps is going to be on the or one of the bearings is going to be on the cap side of the main bearing and one of the bearing halves is going to be on the engine side and you want to make sure you know the orientation of those not only uh, which one's top which one's bottom and mark them but also because those bearings might come out once you take the caps off you gotta be careful about that so they don't fall on the ground and get scratched up but also you want to mark which side of them is facing forward and I'll get to that once I get them out I'll, I'll take a video of that but basically which side of the actual bearing itself is facing towards the front of the engine so you know you have the bearing in the correct orientation but right now I'm going to loosen the two uh, the two nuts that hold the connecting rod cap on now I should be able to push the push the piston up through and out of the cylinder and uh, uh, keep in mind that you 
and this is why it would help if you, if you're in, if the engine wasn't seized. Uh, in this case, it's not seized, so I can just rotate the engine and get these in the position I need them to be. Because sometimes, like say these ones that are down right now, on the on the crank side of things, those nuts that are on the uh, on the connecting rod caps, they might not be in a good position for me to get a tool onto them. So I need to rotate the engine. Full up on this engine, uh, with, with the uh, the piston all the way up, is basically just straight. The connecting rod is straight, and it should be the same on yours. Um, so then I can just, as easy as can be, uh, take the nuts off and just push it straight up through, without it binding on anything, and without the uh, the connecting rod binding on anything. The bearing cap for cylinder number one from the front. See the line I put on there to mark the forward direction. This one I got lucky, it has a tab on the bearing itself that indexes with the cap. So I don't need to mark the bearing for forward direction. All I need to mark is bottom one. Now what I'm doing right now is I kind of had to rock the engine back and forth with my hand so that I could get the actual bottom of the connecting rod to clear inside the block. Um, I needed to go up through there straight and there's there's very little clearance. I had to take the bolts for the bearing cap. I had to take those out so that I can get a little more movement in there. And uh, now what I've done is I'm taking an extension with a socket, gently placing it um, on these little ears of the bottom of the connecting rod. So it look like this, except they're on the bottom of the connecting rod. So I gently place that socket right on there. And very gently, that's the wrong hammer for the job, but very, very gently give it a little, little taps until the, uh, until the piston starts coming up like that. And it's almost to the point where I think I might be able to grab a hold of it with a rag and just pull it out. So here we see I've gotten it out. You can actually see the bearing right there. Now I had to be very careful to hold it underneath to make sure the bearing didn't fall out on the ground because this can just rotate and fall out. But you can see the clearance is so little right there, especially at the bottom of the cylinder. That's why this, you know, being to one side or the other prevents it from getting these ears up through that cylinder. And that's where I have to rotate the engine back and forth until I find that sweet spot. And again, these are the rings I'm replacing. And I just think they just don't have enough spring to them once they heat up. I don't think there's any wear in that cylinder. It doesn't have a lip or anything. I'm going to clean everything up. I'm also going to brush around the seats of the valves. Make sure those are nice and smooth. Making sure not to, you know, I'm not going to take metal off or anything. i got to be gentle with it. So i got a bronze or a brass brush I'm going to do that with. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm only going to do one one piston at a time. I have a ring compressor now, that's why I had to go into town. So, but I still have to be careful moving this thing around that I don't lose that bearing. And also, as you're bringing it up through, remember like I said, you can take the extension and slowly tap it. You also want to make sure, since you're tapping on this with the extension, you don't want to mess up that very edge of that bearing right there but you also don't want to mess up your crank journal. And that's where taking the bolts out, if you can get them out all the way, which they come out and they're, you know, yay tall when they come out. If you can get them out all the way, it's important because the thread scraping against the crank journal can gouge it up. So to take the rings off, see, this is, I got this out. I took that bearing out of there so that I don't drop it. And you see it has a little index tab too which if you're lucky yours will. I also wanted to take note, my pistons, the piston heads point towards front, front of the engine. And uh, on yours, if they don't, you're gonna wanna mark them. You're gonna wanna mark which direction is front. Even if it doesn't have this weird nut, nub on top of it, uh, it's also the way everything is worn in. So that bottom of that connecting rod right there, you want that to take the piston rings off. These are compression rings, first compression ring, second compression ring, oil ring, or oil wiper. You kind of push it like this, 
Get your th thumbnail in there, careful because these are razor sharp. You get it over the edge like that. You take your thumb on this one and you press it that way a little bit. And then you go around it like this. And watch your eyes because they can break. And then so you don't cut your hands, you can actually push this this way like that. And again, pushing up at the same time. We're not worried about the rings, we're more worried about the piston head. We don't want to gouge it up too much. Of course this one's fighting me. At this point you can just take it and like this and go like that. I got a little scrape on the top, but that's okay. That's one, you do the same with the rest. You do not jump all the way up. You go up one groove, get it into the one groove, and then go up the next. So do it in steps. Alright, when you open up your brand new set of piston rings from Hamilton Bob's or wherever you choose to do business. So these look a little bit different than what I just took out of there. You read your inst installation instructions, but basically what we got here is we got the oil wiper and two retainers. The retainers, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, well, the retainers have these little things on them at the, or the, rather the wiper does, has these little tabs right there, top and bottom, that the retainers go on to. You also have, in my case, two compression rings. This is the secondary compression ring, black. They will be marked. This is standard top, so standard size top. You won't be using standard on yours because you're having it honed out or bored out or whatever and sleeved and this one has top as well so we're gonna start with this just as a demonstration this is the oil wiper the oil wiper goes in first now this is you know it's flexible enough and then our locks one lock <laughs> you gotta be careful with them and when you're putting these on, you got to keep in mind where that oil wiper opened up to right here. You never want to line up the openings of the rings or the wipers or the locks. You don't want them ever to be lined up. Defeats the purpose of having rings on your piston head. Rotate it. Remember, step down one at a time. You really don't want to break your brand new retainers and rings. Rotate it. Next one down, of course this is going to be the bottom. Now the reason I'm, I'm, I skipped right over and I went right below that wiper all the way to the bottom is because if I accidentally let that wipe, uh, let the retainer go in to the wiper on the top locking edge, I would have got stuck in there. Okay, because I did that I'm going to have to relieve some of the pressure on it by sliding this end and pushing down at the same time. See, my wiper wants to pop out a little bit. Okay, we're in there. Oh, we went way too far. There we go, we're in there. Now, where's that, where's that end of the wiper? The end of the wiper is, it's right there. So we're clear of that. Do the next one. Now remember when you're doing this that these things are not necessarily the retainers or the wiper. Once you get to the compression rings, they're razor sharp. I'm going to get struck by lightning. You always make sure that you down a couple of sodas before you do this. Sweat your ass off. Soak yourself in deep so your skin feels like it's burning right off. You make sure your hands are shaky as can be. You see what I did there? I skipped over. You can't skip over. Because it won't go. So then we got to find our opening again. Make sure we know where everything is. That's the open there. I'm going to rotate that lock separate from the wiper. Rotate this this way. Don't want anything to line up. Slide it down into place. 
those are easy this is where it gets more difficult so you want to make sure it says top up so this is the standard top any beveled edge on the second one down at least on this application the inside beveled edge always goes down the top one has outside beveled edges it goes either way but it does have a mark on it like I said these are sharp so you put one end in first and you work your way around with it try not to burn. now I oiled my bearing and I stuck it back in there again my piston say front ring compressor has a key it's basically a big band of metal tighten it down it tightens the rings that way you can just drop it in gentle and like that line it up with the front make sure it's a little bit tighter than what it is Let's see if I can tighten it it's a little finicky line it up with the front take the wooden end of a hammer and just the weight of the hammer now I'll reach underneath the engine and guide the connecting rod down onto the crank I see what just happened there it popped in and then basically just guide the connecting rod onto the crank put it all back together right there Make sure the bearings are oiled before you put it together. Make sure the cylinders are oiled before you even start it. Make sure all your rings have plenty of oil so they don't score the cylinders the first time you turn it on. There you go. Put everything back together.